Hi, my name's Simon. Uh, earlier on, I posted um, a link to my post, which you can see behind me, about how to Hollywood your online teaching. And in that post, I take you through a step-by-step -step guide to set up what you can see right now. That is to say, we, we're using a program, or I'm using a program called OBS, which is Open Broadcaster Software, which allows me to put together different visual sources so I can overlay myself on top of other visual sources. So here, what you're seeing is me in front of my webcam on top of the image that you can see on my desktop, which is the web page with my blog post. And the way that I can do this is by using that program, Open Broadcast Software, OBS. Now, in the corner, this is uh, me, as I said, in front of my webcam, and I am in front of a green screen. So if I turn off the green, if I turn off the chroma key, which is making the green screen disappear, then this is what you'll see. So I'm just going to turn off the green, uh, chroma, chroma key now, and you can see the green screen behind me. So if you are not familiar with the chroma, or you're not you're not happy using the chroma keying because it is a little bit fiddly, the lighting has got to be right, and you've got to, there's a bit of a learning curve to using this, you can still use OBS in order to show your student information and that your student can see you and the information you want to show through Skype, which is much better, I think, than just using Skype where the student can just see you or your screen. So here you've got the best of both worlds. You can show yourself and the material that you're working with uh, so that you've got contact with the student. And as you can see, you can minimize this uh, visual source, the webcam to make it as big or as small as you like, or you can move it around the page so you don't obstruct what it is that you want to show behind you. But if you use the Kramer key, if you use the green screen, then what you can do is you can make that disappear and then it becomes completely transparent and then you block less information. But as I said, it's not essential. What I wanted to do in this video was to show you something that I did for the first time this morning. So I'm sure it's bound to go wrong. So this morning I had a lesson with one of my students and we were studying from the uh, from the Tolls textbook, which is the test of legal English skills. And so what I did was I had a scan from the textbook, which of the page that I'm working with. Now, of course, the student that I'm working with has got the course book, but I'm showing this on the screen because I want to highlight the text and the areas that we're working with. And this is a really useful resource. So for example, in this course book, you've got lots of text exercises. So there's lots of reading comprehension exercises. So if the student is giving me the wrong answer, then simply speaking, I can highlight the text where the correct answer is. And I can say, look here, and you will see that the answer is this. And then the student looks at their book, they find the text, and then they understand why the answer, what the correct answer is. And then through explanations, they'll then understand why the correct answer is the correct answer. But one cool thing that you can do with the PDF, and that's this is the first thing, this is the first time that I've done it today, is that you can use the uh, the comments function or the functionality within Adobe in order to write on the PDF, and this then becomes an excellent resource as well. So I'm using Adobe Acrobat Pro DC, which I think is the standard now for Chrome or for most internet web browsers, at least for Windows, for iMacs, uh, for Apple, I've got no idea, I don't use Apple, so, but I'm pretty sure it's the same program. And what you can do with this is you can, uh, above my head, you'll see, oh, that way, uh, above my head, you'll see that there is a, an option to comment. So here in Polish, it's a common toy. In English, I guess it would be comments or something like that. And if you click on that, then it brings you brings up a whole load of uh, editing tools which you can use. Now, the if you use this option here, and I'm going to highlight it here using a different tool, this one here, then this allows you to write on the PDF. And more importantly, it allows the text to move with the PDF. So let me zoom in on the PDF to show you what I mean. So I'm going to zoom in. 
and I'm going to use the scroll bars on the PDF to get the text into position. So let's just say we're doing this question here. Let me just move this. Oh, there we go. Uh, let me say we're doing this question here. So I'm going to click this text uh, this text button here, and I'm going to click on there onto the gap, and I'm going to write in the answer. So you can write in the answers on the PDF. The student sees what's going on, and there you've got clear communication. Everyone knows what's happening. But the cool thing is, is that it scrolls with the PDF. So you can go through this PDF, writing in answers and filling in the answers. This is the first time that I did this today. It might be, this might be old news to some of you, but for me, this was the first time I was using it because I was using other tools to do this, which weren't so great. And this is the first time that I discovered the PDF tools. So there's another exercise here, which is a gap fill task, which um, we filled in the gaps. And then if I move this across onto the other page you'll see behind me, here was another exercise where you could group the answers together under different titles. So there was vocabulary for employment law, and vocabulary for business law, and vocabulary for land law. So if I choose a different tool, and once again, I found this largely by accident, this particular one here where you're writing text in a box. Let me just select that then what you can do is create a textbook. So I can write down, oh, hang on a second. Um, there we go. The second time you use it, it's going to go wrong. So let me just write in another text box. There we go. Maybe that one will be better. Your answer, answer, answer. And then I there was three of these. So I put in another text box here. Sorry, let me just select the option again. Another text box, so answer, answer, answer. So you can write down the answers and you've got different text box, you've got different ways of displaying those answers. And this is a little bit fiddly, I'll be the first to admit that, but it is something that I'm sure you can improve with using this and getting used to this. And I'm, this is something that I will use, but you can, of course, drag these text boxes down to different areas of the page. And this is really useful because these questions here, which I'll highlight here, used exactly those that vocabulary. So I could drag down the, uh, the text box from here to here. I could put the text boxes in the correct positions. And then this becomes another gap fill task. So and my phone interrupting me there as well. So. Um, there are lots and lots of resources within uh, the PDF which you can use to annotate the PDF to improve the student's um, ability to learn online. It allows you to communicate better online. And of course, this is just one thing that you can do with OBS because you can show anything behind. You can show web pages, you can show other PDFs, you can show other materials. There's a whole world of different things that you can do using OBS as that middleman between you and Skype or between you and Zoom. So if you are a little bit unsure about what OBS can offer you, hopefully this video will point you in the right direction of what some of the possibilities might be. And although I am not a technological expert at OBS and at P uh, Adobe PDFs and all this kind of thing, if you've got any questions, then leave them below and I will try to help you out. Okay, with all that being said, have a look at my post again. Let me just see if I can find it. Is it the one here? Work through the step-by-step -step process. Step-by-step uh, -step, uh, process. Uh, it's got all of the links there. It's got basic information about how to download it and set it up. Hopefully, it will work for you. As you, there's a huge help community for OBS online. It's used by thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Um, so, if you've got any questions, that's a good place to go. But as I said, if there's anything I can help you with, then I will.